Admiral's log, date May 7th, 1930. The combination of a heavy cruiser, a battle cruiser, and a battleship proved to be a resounding success. The entire British task force was destroyed without the loss of one of our own warships. Sadly, we have had to mourn the loss of some of our transports. This does not mean that our ships, especially our warships, escaped unharmed. The Hindenburg will take several months to be restored after getting hit by several torpedoes. While our ships are competent at detecting torpedoes, they do need more of a warning. They need a lot of room to correct course after a torpedo has been detected, and even with the best torpedo detection that can be had, we still fall short. To combat this, I have decided to draw up plans for a new destroyer class. This destroyer class will serve to keep our big ships safe. They will operate as small skirmishers, intercepting and gunning down other destroyers while also detecting torpedoes early. It will most likely take several months to get these ships out into the... Hey guys, Stealth here and welcome to episode 5. As you can hear, I had to interrupt the Admiral's log because the Bismarck and Thuringen sent out an urgent distress call. They're being attacked by Nautilus, Retriever, Strenuous, Strongbow, Success, Sylph, White Bear and Witch. All destroyers. Now it's a destroyer ambush, which means that these ships potentially will be right on top of me. Um, because I actually quite enjoy a challenge like this, I'm not going to withdraw because, well, we're just going to fight it out. The Germans don't withdraw. We're going to fight, and that's going to be an interesting one. These DDs could spawn right on top of me, causing all sorts of destroyer and especially torpedo mayhem. But they're not. I got lucky this time around. I have heard reports of ships like these, these ambushes. They don't start at a comfortable 12 clicks out. No, they start at a mere 5 clicks or less. And especially if it's a nighttime battle, which fortunately it's not, if it's a nighttime battle, you're going to be in potentially even greater risk. Because then you won't even see them coming. They'll just pop their torpedoes, run away, and do it all over again. Making for a particularly difficult and dangerous encounter. Now we're going to load the HE, and we're going to start to wipe out some of these DDs, while at the same time angling away from them. I have a decent sonar array, although, well, actually, no, sorry, it's Hydro 3. These ships were equipped with uh, the cheapest sonar array. They were never meant for this type of an encounter. So I am very, well, very limited in my ability to dodge torpedoes. I do have the magic dance button, the avoid torpedo button. Uh, this means that the Bismarck, which is the following ship, so not the lead ship of the division, will automatically avoid torps. And, well, we've seen some, some interesting maneuvers, <laughs> shall I say, in episode 3. Uh, which means that these destroyers might not really stand that much of a chance against the battleships. I just need enough time. But for now, I first need to get an identification on them to see if they've popped their torpedoes. I don't know about them yet, but I can tell you that the torpedo launchers are on the stern. The way that they're maneuvering, they are actually quite likely to be both in range and already have popped their torpedoes. So you know what? We're going to do a full turn to port. Full turn to port. Let's see, you're 10 clicks out, you're 11 clicks out. We're going to switch targets. And we're just going to wipe out some of these DDs, hopefully before they become too much of a threat. 59% ID, 56, 65, 66, we're getting there. We have a hit on the destroyer. And one of my <laughs> very few 6-inchers was able to hit the DD. Shit, we got torpedoes. Uh, we're going to detach the div and the Bismarck. Can the Bis do this? Ooh, I'm going to need more time than that. We're going to go flank speed and hope that I can just about pass between these two torps or these. 
Yeah, we're gonna have to go this way and then sort of zigzag back. But I wouldn't at all be surprised if I'm not going to be able to dodge those torpedoes. There's more coming. Okay, hard to starboard. If we're going to get hit, I want to get hit by one, not more than one. Great amount of damage on that destroyer. It should be dead. The first of eight. The Bismarck takes a torpedo, but right on the belt. Doing very limited amounts of damage. But it does knock both of the engines out of the Bismarck. Not great. Thuringen narrowly avoided a torpedo, but there's a whole lot more coming in. Oh, come on. Why are you not dead? Are you using the magic flex tape solution again? Yeah, 2% buoyancy and holding. At any rate, I have my deed, the Strongbow. And the Strongbow already launched her torps. Which I think at this point goes for just about every ship. Oh, crap. Abyss. Hard starboard. Jesus, where do you start with dodging these things? It's just a large swarm of torpedoes migrating here. Uh, this should be fine, as long as my stern doesn't swing out too much. The Sylph has her torpedoes away. You know what? This thing is not going to get away. We're going to switch fire to the Sylph. Yeah, there's more. I detect that at 1.6 kilometers out, which still gives me a very narrow margin. Yep, there's that torp. Gives me a very narrow margin to dodge these things. I mean, look at these torpedoes. Here's one. Here's the other. It's a little too close for comfort. But so far, we've only been hit by one. Although this one... Oh, no, don't hit my bow. Yeah, it did hit the bow. <clears throat> I didn't turn the ship fast enough. The Sylph is less than seven clicks out. You should be able to hit that, Thuringen. Seven and a half percent chance to hit. We got the secondaries at, wow, less than four percent. That's pretty underwhelming. Salvo away from Thuringen. That looks decent. No. There you go. One hit. Causing severe damage to the stern of the Sylph and knocking out a rudder. Now the rest of the DDs here have been identified. We got the Nautilus, the Witch, and these two are slightly farther away. There's the Retriever. These guys carry eight more torpedoes, which is enough for another salvo. But because they are pretty sizable torpedoes, a 22 inch, and they're quad launchers, they take a lot longer to reload. About 1600 seconds. So we will not be fearing torpedoes for a while. White Bear has her torpedoes on cooldown. You know, we're going to push the Turingen in. Because I can eliminate these three destroyers. This one, this one, and this one. And then potentially be on my way from <laughs> the torpedoes from these boys. So let's knock out this destroyer here. There's one. White Bear next. Seven and a half clicks out. Gun should already be pretty well oriented to go after that threat. First salvo is not going to be that good. Oh, there goes the longbow. Oh, sorry, the strongbow. Wow, did you get hit by the Bismarck? Yeah, you must have been. Nice secondary hit from Thuringen. Causing some slight damage, and that caused a lot more damage. And the ship, flooding badly. Could be dead. There goes the white bear. So that's these three eliminated. I got Nautilus at 8.5 clicks out, Witch at 9.2, and Retriever at 9.9. .9. Then we got Strenuous in success. All of these have launched their torpedoes. We're going to push right in. Not the Bismarck, because she's already taken some damage. But Thuringen has a pretty good opportunity to kill all of these before they lay more eggs. Before they reload their torpedo launchers and come at me again. Because I have about 800 seconds left. The amount of salvos that I can put out with these 15-inchers 
and the accuracy of getting closer, I am pretty confident that this will work out. The Bismarck is trying to pitch in, but I'm not willing to turn the Bismarck over to bring more of her guns to bear. Six and a half clicks out. Come on, kill the Nautilus. I don't need crippled ships, I need kills. I need complete mission kills on these ships. They need to be out of the fight. That's more like it. Ship dead. Uh, target the Strenuous, because she's closest. Easiest to hit. We can get her. This is another moment that I am quite happy that I did bring the 15-inchers and not some sort of 17 or even 18-incher. Because it simply wouldn't fire fast enough. It would potentially blow a destroyer out of the water with one hit. But you need to get that one hit. Um, and the 17-inchers, I think we're only Mark 2s versus the Mark 3s that I have here. Strenuous is further through her reload procedure than the success. Come on. Oh, she's falling in behind the success. That's what she's doing. That's more like it. Strenuous is down. Thuringen doing serious damage. And now the success. At this angle, 1.6 clicks out. The target is fast. Minus 56% chance to hit from a fast target. And the first salvo from the stern turrets misses. Bow turrets then. Success is turning away. Target maneuvers. 34% detractor. Oh, there she goes. She's zigzagging. Minus 30%. Minus 40%. Minus 50%. 60, 70, 80%. I only need to get lucky once with a 15-inch shell. That'll knock out potentially her steering and most likely her engine. And of course cause flooding, ideally. Yes. That is more like it. Engines are all out. The ship is flooding and all her steering is... Well, not all of her steering, but at least her rudder's been disabled. That was a fantastic shot from the Thüringen. Come on, buddy. Come on. Finish her. Got it. Extensive fire killed it. Okay. Last ships standing. The Witch and the Retriever. And it looks like we're going to have to practice our dance moves again, because these guys are not that likely to die before they reload their torpedoes. By the way, it seems like you can see the difference in crew training. Um, the Retriever, or it could be because of the loss of crew, I'm not sure. You have various levels of cadet. You got, I think, 0 to 20 or something. Um, these cadets take 1,601 seconds to reload their torpedo launchers. The crew on the Witch can do it slightly faster. Sure, it's only a margin of 4 seconds, but it is a margin. Look at those torps, though. A range of 18 kilometers. And I thought they were in range at 11. Yeah, they were. But they were in range way, way, way before that. Looks like both the Retriever and the Witch are retreating. Sadly, they can maneuver... And retreat a hell of a lot faster than I can. 41.8 knots. And they're doing that. Especially the witches. Um, do we just let the witch escape? Retriever is just about ready. The witch has launched her torpedoes. I am assuming that's against Thüringen because she's closest. Just to be on the safe side, we're going to have the Bismarck do a 90 degree course correction. At this point, Retriever has also launched Torps. We're going to increase the flank and throw off that torpedo as much as possible. What? Oh, right. 
I think the AI kicked in on the witch and goes, okay, my long range options are expended. I'm gonna go and gunboat a battleship. As one does. Because that is seemingly the best option. Gunboating against a destroyer, or sorry, with a destroyer <laughs> against a battleship. Please let me know how that's going to work out for you. Okay, we're going to turn back to starboard in case the torpedoes from the retriever are still on their way towards me. I got a range of 1.6 sonar, give or take. So I should be able to see them right about here. We're going to slow right back down. <clears throat> And try and get this ship as maneuverable as possible. There is the salvo from, I think, the witch. You idiot. Why are you rushing a battleship? I mean, I would rush a battleship with a destroyer. But I would not be launching torpedoes at 18 clicks out. So the witch is effectively out of the fight. Because she already spent her torpedoes. The Retriever did too. I just hope I'm not overcompensating for my turn. Overcorrecting and still running into the torpedoes from the Retriever. Beautiful bow hit on the Witch. And that caused so much flooding that she should be dead. That, in tandem with her speed, should flood her out. The AI is begging me to end the battle, but we're not doing that. Flooding, dead. Ship eliminated. Retriever. I don't think there's going to be much to retrieve after the 15-inch shells hit the retriever again. Oh! <laughs> Splashes here, here, and here. The crew is not sweating bullets. They're probably sweating torpedoes at this point. Let's go and catch that ship. She's no longer a threat. Damn. <laughs> That's eight destroyers down for the count. And the Bismarck, taking two torpedoes, but thanks to her torpedo protection, survived. Five and a half thousand victory points versus 92 for the British. They lost 1,700 crew members versus a mere 64 on the Bismarck and Thuringen. Although I think that the Thuringen might not even have lost any crew. Crew remaining, 100%. Yeah, but I don't think that... Yeah, we lost six crew members on the Thuringen and 58 on the Bismarck. It's not that bad. <clears throat> it's not that bad. Could have been a hell of a lot worse. Now, at this rate, um, the AI is going to run out of ships pretty soon because they're down to 22. We have a convoy. Oh, this is going to be good. Um, well, I say that, but the light cruisers do pack quite a few torpedoes. König Wilhelm. Escorting eight transports. It's a rather sizable ship to do an escort duty, but okay. Against Cossack, Dunedin, and Phaeton. This is pretty much what I had in mind for these battlecruisers. They can outshoot what they cannot outrun. <coughs> AKA, they can run up to a destroyer, or they can... Well, they cannot really outpace a destroyer, but they can run uh, up to a destroyer, and they can run away from a battleship. Especially the Brits, with their 22.9 knots, I think it was. They're not fast. We're going to go straight for high explosive. Because I know that the light cruisers are not very heavily protected. And as such, should not pose that much of a risk. Transports are doing their brain-dead operations again. We got a radar return. Here. 15 clicks out, that's fine. With our combined armament of 13s and 8s, we're going to be a pretty dangerous ship to deal with for any ship. Especially a light cruiser. She does have torpedo launchers there and there. Oh, wow. 13 inch shell instantly hits the target. We're going to slow down to full and present ourselves as a floating gun battery that they're going to have to pass if they want to get at my convoy. That was a very lucky hit. But it was so destructive to this light cruiser that it might not survive. 
I'm going to turn the stern in as well, so turn to port, allowing all the 8-inch guns, which are faster firing than the 13s, to bring some more lead to the enemy. 1.3, 1.2, this is fine. These battle cruisers have a pretty good hull form, which normally I'm a big fan of, because having a good hull form means you need less engine power to propel the ship at speed. Right now, it's more of a detriment, because at this beautiful hull form, I'm not losing a lot of speed as I'm turning, which is kind of what I'm hoping for. I want to slow down. I want to hit cruise speed, because that gives you that accuracy bonus. But because the ship is so sleek, she simply refuses to slow down. Couldn't quite get what I wanted to show you, but okay. 11 clicks out. Oh, yes, there it is. 13 inch on the stern. Is it going to flood out? Or are they going to flex tape it up? No, they are not. Flex tape failed. We're going to turn hard back to starboard. Both throwing off more speed, as well as potentially dodging torpedoes that might have been sent my direction. I am assuming that these ships are packing pretty much the same torps as the destroyers that we just saw. Which means that they could be quite dangerous at range. 29 knots. Even in this turn, I'm not losing a lot of speed. 9 clicks out. With the... Yeah, the turrets are already almost on target, especially the stern. We can throw out 18 shells with a 47.7 second reload for the 13s. That's... Oh, right, because they're triples. I thought this was longer than the battleship. Yeah, because they're triples, not, do not uh, doubles. And then every 28.2 seconds on the 8-inchers. I do fear that this is going to be a pretty brief campaign at this rate. But, well, it gives me an opportunity to move on to 1940, which is a campaign that is now available. Come on. <clears throat> Tap him with the high explosive. Dunedin did launch torpedoes, but fairly recently. I do have the better sonar here, sonar 2. They got the 12.6 kilometer range. They are more visible, these 20-inch torpedoes. Oh crap, they spotted the nymph. 13 clicks out. That does put the torpedoes, or sorry, the transports in range of the Dunedin. I don't like that. Also, let's say that the Dunedin launched against the König Wilhelm. If she did, that could, could hit the transports. And since they're still operating one bit big flock, I'm not too happy about that. Oh shit, there's a torpedo. Several torpedoes. I am pretty much committed to this turn. Yeah, we're going to push right in. It's going to be nasty, this hit. Oh shit. Well, actually, hold on. I might be able to squeeze the ship through this gap here. It's going to be awfully tight. I am 35 degrees right rudder. I'm going to eat one on the nose. The second one. Oh, it's going to depend on the hitbox. It. Both hit. Shit. Damn it. It's expensive. Fixing up battle cruisers. Torpedoes away from the Phaeton. Damn it. Can we please eliminate the Dunedin, at least? We're flooding, but it's holding around 70%. We should be fine. Kill it! I'm going to maintain a gentle turn away. Blade the ship. 
Jesus, what's wrong with you, König Wilhelm? Target's seven kilometers out. Please actually start hitting the target. Because the Dunedin is almost ready to reload her, or is almost done reloading her torpedoes. And she'll not be terribly happy to see you. I don't know where the torps from the Phaeton are. Nine clicks out. Switch target to the Phaeton. Are they falling back? Oh. Where? There. Two of them. Hard over. Could these pose a threat? No, not to the transports. Just to the König Wilhelm. So we got a small hit on the Phaeton, but it's not enough to be any kind of a risk to her yet. still sitting on some flooding and decent structural and I have all my engines which means that even at full speed so I cannot do flank anymore but I can do full I'm still faster than their light cruisers at 22.7 oh shit there is more potentially coming this way They have a few torpedoes left. This is the last salvo from the triple. But they still got a couple of quads. So they can fire another full salvo. Dunedin isn't launching despite being completely ready. Could she hit the transports with her torps? No. Because the Torps have 12.6 kilometer range and the Dunedin is heading away from the transports. And the transports are heading away from the Dunedin. So no. Okay, good. Keeping a very, very cautious eye on these torpedo launchers. The moment that... Th there. Hard starboard. Dunedin just torpedoed the König Wilhelm again. As you can see here, BC, battlecruiser. That's what they're trying to hit. The Phaeton also tossed out her torps from the triple launcher. She's still prepping the quads. Switch target to the Duna Din. Okay, I'm going to let the... Well... The thing is, I'm considering going for HE. But... I think that AP from the 8 inchers is potentially more useful to deal with these uh, light cruisers. Or did that just bounce? No, they haven't had any bounces yet. I just haven't hit them at all. Or quite limited. Phaeton will torpedo me very soon. Right about now. Now, the first set of torpedoes was sent from that position as I was heading that way, so they should be going here. The Phaeton is going to torpedo... Oh, crap, I need to be turning. If I continue on my course right now, then the Phaeton will torpedo in this direction, which well, that doesn't quite put my transports at risk yet, but I am concerned about it. There you go, that's more like it. 13 inch main belt pen. Some flooding. Phaeton just launched her torpedoes. We're going to do a hard star return. And then we're going to push into these light cruisers. They have also started adding single launchers. Single set torps. Of course, all of this maneuvering is throwing my aim off constantly. I'm making gunnery very difficult. Where? Where? Yeah, I know I've detected torps. <laughs> Where are the torps? I 
I guess the torpedoes were right on the edge of detection range. Hold on a second. Here. This is the torps that were getting detected. Okay. So that was the salvo, pr probably from the Dunedin. I'm hoping that I can detect the ones from the Phaeton before they become a problem. It's gonna be... Oh, well, actually, with that... Ooh, beautiful. With that full turn that I did, and now I can push in fairly safely, I should be fine. Phaeton. Serious flooding. There's the torpedo salvo. It's two launchers. Is it the side-mounted launchers from the Phaeton? Switch to the Dunedin, hard over. Because the Dunedin can launch two more torpedoes at me, and I really don't want to be at three kilometer range or so when she does that. Oh, yes. Got her, got her, got her, got her. Next, Phaeton. König Wilhelm did not come out of the encounter without taking a beating. But... The convoy is safe. That was the objective. Keep the convoy safe. Destroyed secondary guns. Her engines are out. She's suddenly doing... Well, she, I think she's dead in the water. She's just using her momentum. But that's about it. The entire stun, stern is on fire after getting hit by a couple of 13 inches. And that should be it. I'm going to do another course correction in case that she threw torpedoes at me, like so. More flooding, although that doesn't register. Kill it. The ships are 16 million each. So the König Wilhelm at 54 million didn't quite earn itself back in one battle. But not too far off. I think it's going to be three months of repairs before the ship will be back online. Okay, job done. König Wilhelm survives. The transports survive. Three light cruisers did not. Another 2,000 victory points gained. It's going to be some expense to get the ship back operational. Two months. Well, it's not that bad. Hindenburg, four months. We got the Turing in one month and the best mark in three. Which means that we currently only have the Schleswig-Holstein. Um, aside from that, <coughs> we have a bunch of heavy cruisers. So we should be okay. Oh crap, they're all in Palau, aren't they? This is something I still really don't enjoy. Um, the moment that ships get hit, the moment that they're repairing, they all move to the port which is farthest away from where they could possibly be, which in my case is always Palau. So, yeah, the König Wilhelm is in Palau because she's there for repairs. Hindenburg, at least Hindenburg is still in Bremen. That should be fine. 13 months, I don't think we're going to make it that far. 19 ships remain for the British. I don't have my three BBs ready. But we should be able to win this war pretty quick. All right, that'll conclude this episode. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Thank you for watching, and I'll catch you soon for the next.